What's up? What's happening, guys? Good to be back with you on the next lesson. I hope you're ready to learn some crazy beats because these beats are going to blow your mind. Now these grooves are technically advanced, but I'm gonna break it down in bite-sized pieces so no matter where you are on the skill level, you'll be able to understand it. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun for you. Maybe there's something new that you can throw around the kit after learning these. And one more thing before we start the video, guys, I usually save this for the end, but just want you to know you can take advantage of a few free resources at fisherdrumming.com. The first one is when you sign up with your email, you get five free practice loops. I actually bumped it up to five. Yes, you get five totally free drumless tracks just by signing up with your email on the site. Also, there's a free drumming masterclass I'm running. It's a 30 minute online training, it's super, super in depth. We've had over 2000 drummers go through it and it has a 4.5 star rating out of five stars. So super cool resource. You can sign up with your email down below as well. So make sure you take advantage of that. Now let's break down this lesson one beat at a time. We're gonna start with the, I guess you would say the easiest beat first and work our way up in difficulty from what I think is the most difficult. Okay, so groove number one, 16th notes is what we're counting. It's two measures long. So the whole phrase of the groove is two bars. We're gonna be counting one at a time. I'll start it off step by step. The first note of this groove is we're playing an open hi-hat note with a kick drum underneath and it lasts a whole quarter note. We're coming down on the two with the snare. And as we finish that open hi-hat note with the snare on beat two, we're gonna be closing our hi-hat when we close, when we hit our snare, so it has a nice clean finish on the first note. So that looks like this. Okay, one E and a two. Okay, so let's think in 16th notes. Now the following notes, we're gonna look at the next four notes on the hi-hat, okay, up to the three. So we have. And all we're doing right there is we're playing right, right, left, right. Now right, right on the hi-hat, we're playing those mildly soft, you know, more like a ghost note. And then we have a left, and then that last right is an accented note. Then the next two notes, playing two kicks. Then two more notes on the hi-hat. That second note being accented. Accenting that four. Now that last note on the hi-hat, is an eighth note, so we're picking up on the and of four with a left hand on the snare, okay? And that's gonna be an accented left hand. That's the last note of the measure. So let's look at the first half again. Second half. All together. So just try to feel those accents, pay attention to those because it does make the groove sound a lot more interesting than if you're playing all those notes, even on the hi-hat, all right? That's the first measure. So you already got that down. The second half of the groove, it's 16th notes throughout. So the start of the second measure, we have right on the hi-hat, left, left, ghosted on the snare, and a kick for the first four notes. Then we have left, right, right, left left accented on the snare, right, right on the hi-hat, then another left accented on the snare. So that first half of the measure looks like this. Okay, right, left, left, kick, left, right, right, left. Now picking up on the three for the second half of the measure, we have another right, left, left kick. Played the same way. Then we just have a right on the snare. So we bring our right hand over to the snare, play an accented right, and then we just have left, right, left on the hi-hat. 
So that second half looks like this. Again. Right, left, left, kick right, left, right, left. So now let's play that whole second measure. We have. Again. All right, now let's play that just a couple times together, the whole thing through so you can get the feel. Just play it a couple times with me. Again. One more time for kicks. Now it sounds like a lot when you play it really slow like that, but when you get this thing up to speed, you'll feel the rhythm of it. So let me just show you what it sounds like fast before we put it to a click. That's more of the tempo that you'd be playing this at, okay? Let's put it to a click. We'll play it slow and then fast. Play it along with me. Here we go. All right, guys, moving on to groove number two. Now this one is super cool, less notes, so not as much to count out, so that's good. We'll get started. So the first four notes of the groove are the most difficult, but this is what makes the groove so cool, all right? The first four notes, we have a crash with a kick. Second, eighth note. Open left hand, hi-hat with a kick. Then we have right hand, ride, bell with a kick. Then we have another left hand, open hi-hat with a kick. So one and two and, all four kicks, right, left, right, left with the hands. So really slow, we're gonna play it like this. Okay, four notes, crash, hat, bell, hat. Now on beat three, we're coming down with a crash, and a left hand snare, big backbeat there. So it's like a halftime feel where we're hitting the backbeat on three. So that looks like this. Okay, 
again. Now that three is a dotted eighth note, which means it takes up three sixteenth notes. So three E and. So the next note we're coming down is on the uh before beat four. So three E and uh, that uh gets a left hand tom, okay? Three E and uh, then the four, we're going up with the right hand on the bell. A uh, four and a. Uh. Two notes on the floor tom on the and uh, finishing out the measure. That four on the bell is an eighth note. So make sure you don't come in with those floor toms till and a, uh, okay? So we got a uh, four e and a, uh, a uh, four e and a. Uh. So that whole measure looks like this. If our count quarter notes is, let's do da 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 One, two, three, four. Let's slow it down a hair more. One, two, three, four. The first half of the second measure is almost the exact same thing we played as the first measure, okay? Where we have those first four notes alternating with that open hi-hat. Our right hand is just changing. Instead of playing crash, bell, crash, we're playing crash, crash, crash. And it adds this really cool um, you know, orchestration when we're throwing our hand across like this. So here's what that looks like. We're still playing on three, that backbeat. Now the second half of the measure is super simple. We're just playing a quick fill around the toms and it's an a uh, four e an a. Uh. Two notes on each toms. We're picking up on and a uh, because that eighth note we're hitting on that backbeat. So three E and a uh, four E and a uh. all together. And then it starts over. So let's play that whole second measure. All right, again. Now, if you don't have two rack toms, you just have one rack tom, one floor, then just go ahead and start the fill on the snare. Okay, sounds cool like that too. So let's put the first and second measure together. Uh, uh. Woo, sounds pretty dope, right? Again, three, four. Now as you hear it a little faster, really starts to feel good. So you see how simple the real groove behind this is. But I didn't want it to be that simple. I wanted to add some pizzazz. I wanted to make it really cool, make it big, make it feel even crazier. So I added those other notes with the left hand, making more use of your left hand, filling it up and every note has a place and has a purpose. But now let's get this thing to some click play it at a couple different tempos so you can really start to feel this. Here we go.
All right, guys, now it's time for groove number three. This is the real brain buster. This one really throws you for a loop. It is so cool. It's not as easy to count out. You have a lot happening here. You have this crossover thing happening where we're really incorporating a lot of floor tom and we're using our stack. Now, if you don't have a stack, maybe just play it on the, the bell of your ride or just make a stack, get two cymbals, put them on top of each other just to try this thing out. Or if you have another hi-hat, that'd be super sweet. This also sounds really good if you have two hi-hats, okay? We have this constant pattern with our stack. Ka, 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 ka. And in between that quarter note pulse, one, two, three, four, we have all these other notes happening, filling it in. And it just sounds insane. It also looks really cool. So that's this is a flashy kind of chop. It's very impressive to watch. Um, it took some time for me to even come up with it. I was like, I had this in my head and it took me a bit to figure it out. And once I did, it felt super good. So it's extremely fun to play. What makes this one difficult is when you're trying to learn it and count it out, it doesn't exactly fit like the others, how we can split them down into four chunks and look at them in two measures. This pattern really goes over, this groove goes over the bar line. So it doesn't exactly sync up when you land on the one of the next measure. You're actually kind of in the middle of what it fe what the groove actually feels like. I don't want to get too bogged down in that because I really just want you to start to learn the stickings of this. Then you'll see what I mean. So let's start off just going through one note at a time. On one, we have right hand on the stack with a kick underneath. One like that. Then we got left hand on the floor tom. Move our right hand on the next note across to the hi-hat. So we got right, left, right, kick. Those are the first four notes. So your hands are now crossed like this, and then you're gonna pick up on the two, bringing your right hand back to the stack, then your left hand to the hi-hat, okay? So you're going up from here to to right, left on the hi-hat, right on the floor tom, kick. And then on beat three, you have a big backbeat on the snare with the left hand and a stack again, because every quarter note is gonna get a stack here. So again, that looks like this. Okay, your hands are crossed from here, sorry, on the two. Two, E, and a three, okay? Those next three notes right after beat three, where we have stack in the backbeat, we have E and a kick, right hand floor, left hand hi-hat. So three looks like this. The whole thing looks like this. Okay, that's the first, really, the first part of the groove that I want you to memorize. That alone can be a really cool groove. Now the next notes are gonna feel a little bit weird because it's not gonna feel like a groove, but when you put the whole thing together, you'll get the idea. Starting on beat four, we have kick and stack together on four, left hand on the floor tom, bring your right hand across to the hi-hat again, so that same kind of three note pattern. Followed by a kick, right, left, right hand back to the stack, left, on the hi-hat. So all together that's. So if you notice, that's the exact same sticking as the beginning of the groove. We're going back to that again. Now this goes over the bar line. So you have four E and a one E, okay? So let's look at the next notes. And a two E and a, and that looks like this. Right on the floor, left on the snare, right on the stack, left, right on the floor, and kick. Okay. Then picking up on the three, we have stack and snare, big backbeat there. Ooh, that rhymed. Bet you don't care. Stack and snare, stack and snare, backbeat there. Bet you don't care. Stack and snare, stack and snare, backbeat there. All right, I gotta stop now. Now the rest of the measure looks like this. Kick, right hand on the floor tom, left hand on the snare, right hand on the stack, kick, right, left on the floor. So all together.
So now let's play that whole second measure. It really helps you get the feel better. So we're, here we go. Three, four. Okay, again, three, four. All right, so now let's play the whole thing together, guys. First and second measure, the whole groove together. Here we go. Three, four, really slow. Three, E, and a four, E, and a. Okay, <laughs> that's a mouthful. Again, three, four. Did you get that? Now that sounds kind of strange, that slow, right? It doesn't sound like, like where is it, where is it coming down at? Where is it fitting together in the groove? So. When you play it fast, it makes a ton more sense. Here we go. Okay, so that's where we want to get it. Now let's put it to a click on the set at a few different BPMs. That didn't work as well as I wanted it to. There we go. Whoosh. So guys, if you want to practice this further on your own, you can download the PDFs of these grooves down in the description below. Go ahead, hit that link. Just type in your email to get access to the PDFs so you can download them and practice them all you want. Thank you guys for watching this lesson. Make sure to hit thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So guys, you can look forward to the next lesson in a couple weeks. In the meantime, drop by fisherdrumming.com, get those free practice loops, check out that free masterclass where I run through a bunch of different stuff on the drums, especially if you're like a beginner intermediate guy who really wants to find some weak links and improve their drumming and get a really solid foundation. It's a great resource. And as well,
well as check out five different courses we have at fisherdrumming.com and you can get access to those individually or in a total membership program where you play a very small monthly membership each month. So thanks again, guys, for sticking with me on the whole lesson. I'll see you on the next one here in a couple of weeks. Take care and have fun. Oh,